This dangerous acrobatic stunt is all part of a day's work for one of these three men. What is your name, please? My name is Frank Curry. My name is Frank Curry. My name is Frank Curry. Only one of these men is the real Frank Curry. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Robert Q. Lewis, and Kitty Carlisle. On to tell the truth with your host, Bud Collier. To tell the truth, brought to you this week by Anison, the headache remedy with a special combination of ingredients to relieve pain, to relax tension, and to soothe irritability. Anison. Hi, panel. Hi. Hi. How are you all this week? My, it's always such a joy to be with you. Open up that envelope, if you will, please, and follow along as I read on this first one. I, Frank Curry, am a rodeo clown. A rodeo clown is supposed to be funny, but actually his job has a very serious purpose. He is in the ring to prevent death or injury to the cowboys in the bull riding competition. Riding a bucking Brahma or Brahma bull, whichever you prefer, is the most hazardous challenge the rodeo has to offer. The cowboy is invariably thrown and once on the ground is in immediate danger of being kicked, stomped or gored by the infuriated animal. As rodeo clown, my responsibility is to distract the bull and make him chase me until the cowboy can scramble to safety. The only place of refuge for the clown is generally an empty barrel in the center of the arena. Signed, Frank Curry. <laughs> Panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be, as you heard, Frank Curry, rodeo clown. And a very important job it turns out to be. Let's start the questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Oh, thank you, bud. Uh, number one, what is it called when the spurs uh, are tied down? You're <clears throat> fixing to rake the animal. Rake the animal. Uh, number two, um, what is it called when the cowboy pins the rosette on the, on the bull? Uh, steer wrestling. Number three, is that what you call it? No, I call it uh, steer pinning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, number one, when they, when they rope a calf and, and hold it down on the ground, uh, does this hurt the animal when it's thrown? Not too bad. I've heard them bawl a little, but I think they were more mad than anything else. <laughs> Tom Poston. Thank you, Bud. Uh, number one, uh, what do you call it when the, the cowboy pins that little rosette on the bull? I have never seen one pin a rosette on the bull yet. <laughs> now, listen here, Kitty. I I'm... saw him do it in Calgary. Oh, yes. Yeah. No. Ah. Number three, uh, what's a pig and string? That's what you tie the calves' legs with. Number two, where is it carried by a cowboy who's doing that event? He carries it in his mouth. Thank you. Number one, uh, how do you stay in those barrels? By humping up. Uh, number three, do you agree with that? I, would you repeat the question? How do you stay in the barrel once you get in? I don't uh, go in the barrel. You never go in the barrel? Well, I'm a little bit too tall for that, and I don't have to anyway. What do you do to get away from the bull? Hey, you guys. Number three, what do you do to get away from the bull? <laughs> well, I, uh, I run for the fence. Uh, n uh, thank you. Uh, number two, there's a, um, is there a school that gives a course in rodeo? Not that I know of. Uh, number one, is a, tech, is a grandma bull good for anything else except being tied down at the rodeo? He isn't tied down. He is ridden in the rodeo. Ridden? And I mean, do they raise him like, you know, for me? They certainly do in India and several places in the Southwest Asia. They're used to that. Timothy, who's Casey Tibb? Well, he's secretary of the RCA right now. He's also one of the champion steer riders. Uh, Robert Q. Lewis. Thank you, bud. Uh, number two, uh, what is the pay you get for the kind of work you do? Well, that varies. How much do you get, you know? <laughs> uh, 
in answer, in answer to your counter question, at this point, I think too much. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, may I ask, what, what is the rate of pay for the kind of work you do? Well, that varies. Oh! <laughs> How does it vary, number three? Well, it varies on the arena size. The All right, for example, what is the last arena in which you played? That was El Paso. What was the name of the arena? The name shall be nameless, because that's all our time. You'll have to mark our ballots now, if you will, please, at once. No change, of course, once having marked, and no consultation while marking, as you are now, for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers, of course, shall receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked, panel? Very well. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. I think there's, uh, there are courses in Rodeo. I think so. And uh, I think Brahma bulls are also used here in this country for, uh, for uh, as beef cattle. Brahma, Brahma cattle, I mean. Peggy. I voted for number three because there were, I read about there is some school for Rodeo and also he knew all about Casey Tibbs. He was on the cover of Life once and he was right about him. Robert Q, which one do you think it is? Well, uh, I, have to, I have to argue with both of them. I, I, number three was very good, but I like number one. If he's, well, if, he, if he's not the fella, he's one of the best coached fellas in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty. I voted for number three. I think they're all absolutely marvelous. But I had a feeling that number three, when he said he was too tall to get in the barrel, he said it with real feeling. <laughs> I'll bet you anything you want that number two is well known to all of us. It's probably our boss. <laughs> <laughs> We don't recognize it. Well, let's find out, yeah, shall we, as to which it is. That'll bring us... The only way I can think of it bringing us right up face to face with the truth and see how well we've voted oh, and marked our ballots. One. We'll find out now by learning which one of these three gentlemen actually is the rodeo clown. So will the real Frank Curry please stand up? Oh. How do you... All I have to say, Tom, is just wait till I get back and let our boss know that you think he looks like a clown. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, it's Mark Goodson and he's moonlighting. <laughs> yes, hey, I want to ask number two if he's too tall to get in the barrel. Yes, ma'am, I've never gotten in the barrel. <laughs> you just use the barrel as a protective well, device? You know, there's usually it? another man in the barrel, and I work out in the field, uh -huh. uh, you know, away from the barrel and take the bull to the barrel I sometimes, see. but never get in it. Well, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes, I'll tell you. <laughs> Number one, what is your real name, sir, and what do you really do? My name is Melvin D. Anglin, and I'm a lawyer in Bearville, Arkansas, deep in the Ozarks. <laughs> and number three, you walked off with the greatest percentage of votes. What is your real name, and what do you do, sir? My name is Robert Weatherstrom, and I drive a truck here in the city. <laughs> well, you all rode the same truck to success here tonight because there were four incorrect votes at $250 each. Gentlemen, that is $1,000 for Madison. And, of course, a gift package of the fine products from the makers of Madison. Thank you very much for being such good coolers and hope you had fun. Goodbye and God bless you. All right, panel, please introduce, uh, meet, as I should say, as I introduce to you now, our next group of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Margot Dashi. My name is Margot Dashi. My name is Margot Dashi. And kindly follow along with your copies of this story. I, Margot Dashi, am rather knowledgeable about the history of Elizabethan England. As a matter of fact, in my job, I am sometimes called upon to use 16th century English. I work in a London restaurant, which is a faithful replica of an ancient Tudor banquet hall. We serve authentic Elizabethan meals, starting with the mead and running right through to the syllabub. The whole meal is served in the spirit of good, raucous Elizabethan fun. We encourage our diners to slurp their soup, eat with their fingers, and toss bones over their shoulders in the manner of King Henry VIII. As the head of the serving ladies in the Elizabethan room, my official title is Chief Wench. Signed, Margot Dashi. Well, these 
these three wench, uh, these three ladies all, <laughs> all claim to be Margot Dashi, chief wench in the Elizabethan room. Let's start this cross examination with uh, Tom Poston, who is currently is currently is the star of Easy Does It at the uh, Mineola Playhouse. Thank you, Bart. Yes. Good luck. Yes, we're doing. Uh... It's going great. Good. But I, I would like to ask, number one, please, the uh, origin of the name Dashi. The name Dashi is French originally, but um, it came into, uh, then it came, went to Wales somehow. Oh, is that so? Mm -hmm. What about you, number two? What's the origin of your name, Dashi? It's Irish. How do you like that? <laughs> and, and you're Irish too, then? Yes. Thank you. Number three, tell it's us your little story. Would you <laughs> I'd say it's French. Thank you. Uh, number three, what, is it, what does it mean when they throw those bones over their shoulder at the big dogs and all that stuff? Is that genuine Elizabethan uh, fun? Yes, indeed. What kind of bones do you serve that you throw over your shoulder like that? All kinds of bones. Shoulder bones, it should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cass. Thank you. Um, number three, where is Bunratty Castle? In Ireland. Uh, number two, do you use forks in your uh, place? Well, you use two-pronged ones, which are called uh, bifurcated daggers. Oh, well, yeah. how nice. Number one, what is the name of the hotel in which this room is uh, located? The Gore Hotel. Number yeah. three, the Gore Hotel. The Gore hotel. Number three, uh, um, what's the name of the room in the Gore Hotel? It is a beef room. Uh, number two, who is Christopher Marlowe? Well, he is an Elizabethan writer, character. Uh, number one, do you sing songs? Yes, I do. Uh, number three, fresh ones? <laughs> fresh <Dashy songs>. ones. <laughs> Robert, Robert Q. <laughs> uh, number three, it says here you're rather knowledgeable yes. about uh, Elizabethan England. Uh, who was Elizabeth's sister, please? Mary. Number two, uh, what was the name of the first wife of Henry VIII? Uh, Catherine of Aragon. Who was his second wife, number one? Number one, who was Henry VIII's second wife? Um, Mary. I beg pardon? Mary. Thank you. Uh, when you say, uh, what is, uh, number three, what is mead? Mead is a, is a drink. It is uh, made from uh, apple juice. Number two, is there any alcohol in mead? Yes, uh, because it's a hard cider. I see. Number one, Kitty. Number one, do you agree that mead is made from apple juice? Yes, I do. What is the origin of it? I mean, how, long ago, how long ago did it start? In the 14th century. Thank you. Number two, what is a syllabub? A syllabub is uh, Madeira wine or canary wine, raspberry juice. And, and it serves at the end of the meal? Yes. And cream? And cream. Number three, what do you serve also that's extraordinary, aside from throwing the bones over the shoulder with a roast beef? <laughs> Throwing the bums uh, over the shoulder. Bones. <laughs> 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 over the shoulder. Well, with all this drink, I should think, well, never mind. <laughs> we serve swan. How do you cook a swan? I really don't know. Because you catch the swan. <laughs> 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 all right, there we have it. We've come up to that moment again where all that is left for us now is to mark our ballots with great, great authority and precision. Yes, and, of course, course. Oh, no course. consultation permitted as you do so. Really vote, if you will, for number one. Number two, or number three. All ballots marked? All right, Tom, for whom did you vote this time? Well, I voted for number one because uh, I like the way she said that it may have come from France, but originally, but, but for as far as I'm concerned, it's Welsh. And uh, the Welsh are very, uh, are very uh, proud of uh, their background and so forth. I thought it was number one. Peggy. I voted for number one, too. I was in that hotel about 10 years ago, and I, uh, I don't imagine you were there 10 years ago because you looked too young. It was very dark in the room, but it was the Gore Hotel, so I voted for you, number one. All right, Robert Q. Uh, I voted for number one, even though I, there was one answer I was not too pleased with, but oh, she's, uh, they're all pretty, but if I were going to throw a bone over my shoulder, I'd like her to be there to catch her. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty. I voted for number three. Um, I don't think uh, Mary was uh, uh, Henry VIII's second wife. You don't wife. have to know history. No, I guess not. Not to throw a bone over your shoulder. Well, and I'm sure I'm wrong. I'm always wrong when I'm absolutely positive I'm right. 
But I think number three looks like the kind of winch that Henry VIII would like. Oh, what? <laughs> All right, there we have it. With our reasons given and our votes are there for tally now. Let's see how we stand up in the face of real truth as we learn which of these young ladies actually is the uh, chief wench in the Elizabethan room. Will the real Margot Dashi please stand up? Good job of fooling. Believe me, you did a very good. Thank you very much. Uh, incidentally, Margot Dashi is here in this country to remind us all that during 1964, Great Britain, of course, is celebrating the uh, 400th anniversary of the birth of William Shakespeare. It's all part of the festival. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? Miss Caroline Hay. You may remain seated. Oops. Could I? <laughs> Get too far away from the microphone, we can't hear you. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. And um, I intend to be an air hostess. Ah. Hope we're flying with you someday. And number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Mary Nolan and I'm a talent coordinator for CBS Radio in New York. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you've been on the other side of the thing. <laughs> and you've all done mighty well because there were three incorrect votes at $250 each. Anybody can add that, especially a lady, I'm sure. $750 coming your way from Anison and a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Anison, too. Thank you for being with us. Hope you had as much fun as your face has seemed to indicate. Good night and God bless you. And now let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Ernie Bradford. My name is Ernley Bradford. My name is Ernley Bradford. Now, panel, you may follow along with your copies of this story. I, Ernley Bradford, have spent the last ten years retracing one of the great sea adventures of ancient literature, the poet Homer's story of the voyage of Ulysses. In my own boat, with Homer's Odyssey in one hand and modern navigational charts of the Mediterranean Sea in the other, I sailed to the land of the Lotus Eaters examined the caves of the one-eyed giant Cyclops, and visited the domain of the witch Circe. I plotted my course between Scylla and Charybdis to the island of Calypso, and finally back to Greece. Based on my experiences, I have come to the conclusion that the saga of Ulysses, as told in the Odyssey, was not pure fiction, but was, in fact, based on an actual voyage made by a real person to places still in existence. Signed, Ernley Bradford. Very well, panel. These three gentlemen all claim to be Ernley Bradford, 20th century Ulysses, I guess you might call him. And let's start this uh, round with our own 20th century Ulysses in the feminine gender, Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you. Uh, number two, in what sea is the island of Mykonos? In the Aegean Sea. Uh, number three, uh, d uh, d well, there was a temple in the island of Delos. And to whom was that temple? Whose temple was that? Uh, Pythagoras. Um, number one, where is Parnassus? Mount Parnassus lies uh, above Delphi and uh, to the, shall we say, west of Athens. Thank you. Uh, would you please tell me, number two, where are the caves of the one-eyed giant Cyclops? Well, I think that um, they're in western Sicily. Uh, number three, uh, uh, where is uh, the, the, the channel between Scylla and Charybdis? Uh, that is the Straits of Messina. Robert Q. Thank you, bud. Gee, this is a fascinating idea, but number one, I don't understand. It says you spent the last ten years on this voyage. May I ask why? Well, it's one of those things one thinks of when young and does somehow. No, I, I didn't mean uh, for what reason. I meant oh, I see. why would it take you ten years? Well, I do have to work. <laughs> I see. Well, that's a very good answer. Number two, number two, may I ask you this? In what year did Homer live? Uh, about... Um, uh, 800 B.C., 750-800. Thank you. Uh, would you tell me number three, if you will, please, where the island of Elba is in yeah. relation to the Greek islands? Oh, that's off uh, 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 
Well, that's where Napoleon was, off Cors Corsica. Yes. Corsica. It's off Corsica. Thank you. Kitty. Oh, I wish I were my daughter Kathy right now. She just finished reading The Odyssey in the eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't read it with her. Oh, it's so awful. Um, I, wanted, I would like to ask one question, though, to number one. Do you believe that one person wrote this whole thing, or do you believe that Homer was many people? Now, when you say one thing, do you mean the Iliad or the Odyssey? The Odyssey. Uh, the Odyssey. Um, I think one person wrote it. You think one person wrote it. It was not a, a, con a, a conglomeration of stories. No, ma'am. Uh, number two, now you're interested in, in seafaring things. Do you know what the Mary Celeste was? Well, she was the ship um, that was found abandoned with, uh, with no, no crew on board and remains a mystery as to... Uh... Thank you. Number three, can you spell Scylla? Scylla? Uh, uh, S-Y-C-L-L-A. Thank you. Tom Post oh, yeah, should ask that. I was going to ask number one if he could spell Charybdis. <laughs> well, feel free. Sin sincerely. I only say that, number one, because it appears to me to be misspelled here. I'll spell Charybdis for you. All right. Uh, C-H-A-R-Y-B-D-I-S. Charybdis. Thank you. Uh, number two, uh, where is uh, Circe? Where was Circe's uh, habitat? Uh, well, I think it was on the um, western coast of Italy where... Um, above Naples, where Monte Circaea now is. Oh, yes? Okay. And that's it. So creep up to the doors of your caves and take what you will, but mark those ballots at once, please. Without change, no consultation, just vote for number one. Or vote for number two. Or vote for number three. Hey, the balloting went quickly this time. Very well, Tom. For whom? I voted for number one. Uh... I'd like to do that myself. I think it's great. I, I've always been interested in the, the Odyssey. I played Hermes once in a show. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I wanted it to be number one, even if it isn't. Peggy. I voted for number one as well, because it seems to me number three, the Delos it was the Temple of Apollo, and also when he said, number one said, the Parnassus is above Delphi, that's where it is, right above it. <laughs> Robert Q. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm right along with you. I voted for number one. I like that answer about it took me 10 years because I've got to work to, to be able to do it. I like that. And Kitty, are you running with the clock? I'm or? waiting for number one. <laughs> 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 well, number three, I think, misspelled Scylla, which is very easy to do. And although number two knew about that fascinating mystery of the Marie Celeste, I nevertheless voted for number one. Very well, it's unanimous then. It's the first time in a long time. Four for number one, and with that, let's stand or fall, shall we, as truth stares us in the face and proves which one of these gentlemen actually is the one who followed the, the trip of Ulysses, and is a 20th century Ulysses in a sense. Will the real Ernley Bradford please stand up? tenure on this show, which is in its eighth year, that only twice before, only once before, have there been twice in the same evening that you have been skunked completely. Number one is quite an actor. I he should so say he is. Voted. Number yes. one with that Great. gorgeous tan you have. We'll ask about you in just a minute. First of all, I want to tell you that Mr. Bradford has written a book describing his voyage entitled Ulysses Found, published by Harcourt Brace and World. And we'll all get it and read it now, I'm sure. Number one, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? <laughs> My name is Gerhard Liebmann and I'm an architect. <laughs> Number three, what is your real name, sir, and what do you do? Uh, my name is Charles Dornhorst, and I'm in charge of photographic surveillance for the Mosler Safe Company. <laughs> oh, gentlemen, you did it. Twice in the same evening, there were four incorrect votes at $250 each. That's $1,000 from Anison. And, of course, a gift product of all the fine products of Anison. We thank you very much for being with us. Goodbye, and good fortune, and God bless you. Wise, before we say goodnight, don't let prejudice or fear or ignorance exclude anyone from your circle of friends. Prove democracy by brotherhood. For the next two weeks, I'm going to be on vacation, and my good friend Robert Q. Lewis is going to sit in for me right here, and I thank you, Bob. I'm delighted, Bob. Thank you. 
Don't forget to watch the Tell Us Truth at the same time next week and be with us on the afternoon show tomorrow. In the meantime, speaking for Addison, may I say good night and remind you once again to tell the truth. Good night. The Tell the Truth is a Mark Woodson, Bill Cotman production. brought to you tonight by Wizard Room Deodorizer that kills household odors. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, this program recorded.